Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at mechanical vibrations, just a brief overview. So let's recall some things we've talked about previously. A damped mass spring oscillator consists of a mass attached to a spring fixed at one end, and we have our second order differential equation to describe the motion of that system. So we've learned this in the past, and now we want to talk about undamped free motion. So the damping factor would be zero, and then our external forces would also equal zero. And so then this second order differential equation can be rewritten as our mass times our second derivative plus K, which is the stiffness of the spring, times our equation Y equals zero. And then the way that we tend to rewrite this is actually second derivative of Y with respect to T plus omega squared, so this is the Greek letter omega, times Y equals zero. And so what omega is, is it's actually square root of k over m, which is our angular frequency, or you can say the angular displacement per unit of time. And it's actually radians per second by default. And so if you have omega squared right here, it's just k divided by m. So our undamped free system, we have our characteristic equation for the second order differential equation, and we just have r squared plus omega squared equals zero. So if you solve for your roots, you're gonna get plus and minus omega i. And so then our general solution to this second order differential equation is y equals c1 cosine omega t plus c2 sine omega t. And then we actually have another version of this solution. So sometimes you'll write it like the first version, or sometimes you'll write it like our alternative version, which y equals a sine of omega t plus phi, so that's Greek phi. And then in this case, if you use this second version, c1 and c2 are just a sine phi and a cosine phi respectively. And then if you wanted to solve for a, a is actually, think of the Pythagorean theorem here, square root of c1 squared plus c2 squared. And then you can find phi by saying that tangent of phi is just C1 divided by C2. All right, so now let's just mention a few things about this system. It produces simple harmonic motion, which is just a simple sine wave. A represents the amplitude. Phi represents a phase angle. Think of it like a shift horizontally. And then our period is 2 pi over omega. And the period is the time that it takes for one cycle to occur. And then the reciprocal of that, if you flip over the period, we call that the frequency, and it's cycles per second. So how many cycles occur in one unit of time? So let's try out this example. So we want to determine the equation of motion based on the model we were just talking about. For a mass of 1 8 of a kilogram, if the stiffness of the spring is 16 newtons per meter, the initial position is one half meter to the right of the equilibrium point, and then the initial velocity is square root two meters per second. So what we're looking for is this equation, our solution, y of t. So we have to figure out um, omega, and then eventually c1 and c2. So finding omega using our formula that it equals square root k over m, we just plug in our values, and we find out that omega is eight square root two. And so we can fill in our equation, and now we just need to find our coefficients. So using our initial conditions, we can find C1 and C2. So uh, the initial position, if Y represents our motion, if we plug in zero, that's time zero. So initially, it should equal one half meter to the right. So Y of zero equals one half. We plug that into our equation, zero. And if we simplify, notice this term is going to be 0. And then we have c1 times 1, because this is cosine of 0. And we get that c1 is just 1 half. To use our second initial condition, notice it's velocity, which is the derivative of position. So that's why we actually need to find y prime to use our second uh, condition. So first, differentiate your general solution up here. And so taking a derivative, we then can plug in the fact that if we have time zero, we know it should equal square root two. So we plug in zero for t, set it equal to square root two, 
notice that this term here is going to be 0. And then this term here, this is going to be square root 8, uh, 8 square root 2 times C2 times 1. This is all 1 right here. And so we get that C2 is just 1 eighth. Okay, so that's our answer. Our equation of motion is y equals 1 half cosine of 8 square root 2t plus 1 eighth sine of 8 square root 2 times t. Now we're going to actually also find the alternative form of this equation. So we need to do a little bit more work to get that one. And so first let's find a. So since we found c1 and c2 already, we just plug into our formula and we get that a is 1 8 times square root 17. And then we've already found omega, so we have to just find phi. And so for phi, we're going to use the fact that tangent phi is c1 over c2. So we know that tangent of phi is 4. However, we need to recall some things from trig to be able to figure out um, what phi is. So first recall if you use your tangent inverse function, the angle is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 by definition, which is quadrants 1 and 4. And so we have to use what we figured out for C1 and C2, kind of putting all this together. So we know that C1, we were given at the beginning that it's A sine phi. Our C1 value was positive. So because C1 was positive, was 1 half, that means that phi must be in quadrants 1 or 2. Because if you recall from trig, sine is positive in those two quadrants. And then C2, because it equals A cosine phi, because our C2 value, 1 eighth, was positive as well, phi must be in quadrants 1 or 4. And that's because cosine is positive in quadrants 1 or 4. So you put these two together, and notice they both overlap if you say that we have quadrant 1. So then you can conclude that phi is in quadrant 1. And why we need to do that is because if we got that phi was in quadrants 2 or 3, we would actually have to add 180 to our answer because tangent inverse, how it's defined. And so we don't have to do anything extra because we are in quadrant 1. So tangent inverse of 4 is phi, which is about 1.326. And so our final answer in our alternate form is that y equals square root 17 over 8 sine of our omega 8 square root 2 times t plus tangent inverse of 4. So you could put the 1.326 here, but to be more precise, I put the unrounded answer. The last thing to talk about is other cases that we'll come across. So the first one is underdamped motion. This is also called oscillatory motion. And some things about this type of motion is that there's not enough damping present to prevent the system from oscillating. And so we have this occurring anytime b squared is less than 4 times m times k when we plug in our values. And also you can tell that this is going to be an underdamped situation when your roots are complex for your characteristic equation. And so in this situation, the general solution has this format. So it has two versions of it. And then the damping factor is a times e to the alpha t. And so what happens in this image, you can see what's going on, is your motion is oscillating between positive of the damping factor and negative of the damping factor. And then we have a quasi period, which is 2 pi over beta. And then our quasi frequency is the reciprocal of that. And then the other two cases are over damped and critically damped motion. And so these are some images for what those look like. And in both situations, your motion doesn't oscillate. It's considered overdamped if your b squared value is greater than 4 times m times k, and it is critically damped if b squared actually equals 4mk. And then overdamped occurs when we have two distinct real roots, so they're different from each other. And then critically damped is when you have a real root, but it's repeated. And then we have our general solutions for both of those. Okay, so just something to keep in mind for our mass spring system. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.